This doesn't fit on the table. Right, we're gonna bring him on the floor. Uh, uh. We're now on the floor. No, it still doesn't fit in frame. God damn it. All right, one more level up. Oh. This tripod's honestly massive. Ugh. That's still not big enough. Oh my god. Zoom out. You can see. Get. Ugh. Legs. There we go. Box. Ugh. Hey, what's up? Today we're going to be taking a look at the very large Masterpiece Movie Megatron. This was released in and around the same time as Jazz in 2019 and retailed for about 160 US dollars. Or, as My Toys R Us had it, as like $200 Canadian. Thankfully, I got this guy on sale, otherwise I would probably have never bought it. This thing is huge it's it's the biggest the biggest single transformer i think i've ever bought in my life that in the box there's this piece of cardboard i don't honestly don't know why that's there but it's there and the figure comes packaged on a plastic tray like your standard masterpiece figures but these instructions are honestly the worst when i first opened this guy up it took me like an hour to figure out how to transform this thing here's this whip which is really terrible but i'll talk about that later you get one of the most important accessories, the AllSpark, and his cannon, because, you know, you gotta have Megatron with his fusion cannon. He comes packaged mistransformed, but he comes packaged looking like the original leader class, which is kind of funny, the way that the wings are splayed out. It just it reminds me of that original toy, and it's just... I think it's cool. But, yeah, he's, he's big and hefty. He's a heavy boy. He jiggles. Jiggle mode. <laughs> um, he measures in at around... 12 inches or 30.5 centimeters, so about a foot tall. He's a little bit taller than that, but yeah, for reference, he's a foot tall. He's very, very well detailed. There's a lot of like this brownish gold paint all over him, which wasn't really seen in the movies, but I like its inclusion because it it leaves the figure not looking plain, because I feel like if they went with the all silver like in the movie, he'd be too plain. But I do like the way that they did the detail and paint work on this guy. Not a lot of paint, so there's no risk of paint chipping. He does have quite the backpack though, and that does that makes it off-putting for a bunch of people. But overall, its accuracy to the on-screen model is really, really well done. And it's done too well because it does hinder the posability and the, the overall function of this toy is kind of hindered because of the design. As you saw with the backpack, the transformation does get take some sacrifices. But overall, I like the way it looks. It, it's imposing on your shelf. You need quite a big shelf for this thing. It doesn't fit on my shelf. It has to stay in vehicle mode. And even then it barely fits because the wingspan is too big. But yeah, it's a, it's a very nice looking Megatron. He looks a little skinny in the legs for my liking, but that's so that they fold up on each other. So I understand why it's a little skinny. But yeah, I have to pull the camera all the way back here just to do the, the freaking size comparisons because he's so, so tall. <laughs> um, here he is next to Jazz, the MPM Jazz, who he can rip in half, but there are no tabs in his hands and no tabs on Jazz, so he can't really actually hold Jazz, which is kind of unfortunate. And here he is next to Optimus, and I think Optimus is a little too short next to Megatron, but that's just like a minor gripe. Jazz seems like a fine size, but Optimus seems like he's a little too short next to Megatron, but we don't really see them standing up next to each other in the movie, so that could be accurate for all we know. And then, just for you regular Masterpiece collectors out there, here he is next to MP Exhaust, um, or Wheeljack. This is the Wheeljack mode, just so you can get a sense of how he scales with normal Masterpiece toys, and doesn't really fit with that at all, but, you know, whatever. And just if you don't own any Masterpiece figures, here's Siege Megatron. He's taller, he's much, much taller than a... He's twice the size of a Voyager, actually. Uh, yeah, he's twice the size of Siege Megatron, which is very, very incredible. <laughs> but you do pay for that size. The head sculpt is very, very accurate and very nice. Overall, just looks amazing. It does have an extendable neck um, and an opening mouth, but it opens at like a weird angle. So it can't really open the mouth when the head is in its normal position, 
and you can kind of pose this as eyebrows if you want to even though it's just for the transformation but it's kind of funny when you you pop the head crest up and it looks like he's surprised like oh my god squirrel but yeah the mouth i think opens on a weird joint and i'm not a big fan of it um it's the same with npm barricade which i will be looking at next just the, the jaw articulation is kind of funky but overall in the articulation it's not bad the head can rotate a full three oh there pops off it does pop off so you gotta be a little bit careful with that they can do a full 360 um like i said his neck can extend so he can look up that far and look down that far although it looks a bit weird and the mouth opens and closes shoulders are on pretty heavy ratchets this shoulder pad moves out of the way and arms only go out that far he does have a bicep swivel elbows bend just under 90 degrees which is a little unfortunate the fingers are all articulated well most of them um he does have a wrist swivel which is really nice um, even though you can't really tell which way up his wrists are. He does have a waist joint. Um, now getting to the legs real quick. He does have hip skirt thingies on the sides, but you know, they don't really act as hip skirts. Uh, die cast feet. His legs can move forward that far. However, those die cast feet are really heavy for the joints and the legs. There's that hip skirt piece I was talking about that moves out of the way for the legs. He does have a thigh swivel. 90 degree bend at the knee. And he does have a very chonky ankle pivot. Like, it's very chunky. But like I said, those, those die cast feet, the tips of the feet, make the feet loose and the hips loose. It's just overall, he's quite wobbly. But yeah, like I said, you gotta pull the camera all the way back. You can see all the other junk on the side just to fit him in frame. He's massive. Can't think I said that enough, but yeah, he's friggin' massive. Here's his fusion cannon. It looks nothing like it did in G1, but that's okay. It does open up because in the movie it extends out. So you got that nice fusion cannon right there that just collapses in on itself. And that does move, which I'll talk about in a second when I attach it to Megatron. Overall, the detail's nice on this thing, but eh, I'm not a big fan of the design to be completely honest. You do have this stupid thing. This is the whip and he's got the mace in the movie. But this is not posable. It has a joint there, but that's it. So he can't really hold up the mace. It's it's really annoying. I don't like that at all. And here we have the All Spark, the accessory that probably should have come with Optimus, but it came with Megatron instead. But either way, here's an All Spark. Mine has a bit of an issue where there's like a gap in the glue, the gluing area, so it like splits apart, which is real weird. But the detail on this thing is very nice. It is the complete wrong color. It's supposed to be like this brownish leathery type color, light leathery type color, but it's this silver, but I don't mind it. I just, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> I wish it was the accurate color, but this is fine. The all spark can go into his chest because spoiler alert, he dies, but the chest armor is so hard to get off. You gotta open the chest to pop the thing out and then close the chest armor back up, but you gotta be careful because sometimes the arms will fall out and it's it's a whole thing. But there's a slot in there you can put the all spark in and you can, just like Jazz, you can basically murder Megatron just in a, least, in a less graphic way. But that's where the all spark stores and I just kind of keep it there so I don't lose it. But it's a really nice feature. It's very well detailed on the inside here. You got like ripples and like broken bits in there to make it look like he's dead, which I think is really cool. And if you want to display your Megatron like that, you have that option, which is very nice. Uh, zooming out here, let's take a look at some of the other accessories. So the gun. The gun, you can fold up the, um, the arms, you can rip the hands off. Both hands come off. And <clears throat> they are a bit of a pain to get off the first time, but after you've done it a couple times, they, they come off pretty easily. Getting the back in is hard. But the fusion cannon joint does rotate like that, so you can plug it into one hand. Because he does shoot jazz like this in the film at one point. Only once, he uses his fusion cannon with one hand. But you notice, there's an extra little peg on the gun there. So if you just curl the arms in. And just attach them together like so. You can give him the two-handed, weird-ass fusion cannon thing. I don't know why he does this in the film. To me, this makes absolutely no tactical sense to have a gun like that, but hey, he can do it. It's neat to display him like that, but like I said, his feet are so heavy and the joints are not great on the legs that it's hard to get him in poses. This thing sucks. So regular Masterpiece Megatron came with a posable mace with a posable chain. This guy has this stupid ass rubber 
thing. And I know he's not as expensive as G1 Masterpiece Megatron, but I still feel like he needed at least a bendy wire in there because he can't hold his mace. It just like flops there, which yeah, that doesn't look good. And he's, he's got to hold it. So he can't do the pose on the box unless you have a really tall Bandai Tamashii Nation stand or the equivalent of that. Cause it's just, it's a poo poo mace. It's, uh, this really bugs me. I, the price you're paying for this, especially in Canadian dollars where it's like 200 to $220. I wish this had an actual, like at least a bendy wire in it. You could probably put one in or at least put one on the side yourself, but you shouldn't have to do that when you, at the price you're paying. It's, it's not a great mace. I don't display it with, I mean, I display it in vehicle mode, like I said, because he's too big, but I don't display it with the mace when it's in robot mode. Overall, the robot mode is, on the whole, it's okay. It's got a lot of problems. You can see the legs are just like dangling because of those feet. They're so heavy for the figure. Like, look at that. And there they go, and they flop down. It's, that bugs me. The articulation bugs me, the backpack. I'm okay with the backpack to be completely honest, but that mace really ruins it for me. Otherwise, the robot mode's fine. Uh, transformation of this guy is actually, it's simple once you get the hang of it, but the instructions don't make it look very easy because they're garbage. They are hot steaming piles of garbage instructions. Um, but I do love how the nose cone tucks away in the figure because a lot of times it's either hanging off the arms or it's like hanging off the back and it just they did a really good job with it on this figure and I feel like the studio series one kind of borrows some engineering from this which I like seeing that if you can't afford the masterpiece get the studio series one but this thing as you can see has a very impressive wingspan it's friggin huge now one thing I, you will have to note my figures feet are extremely loose so you got to tab the gun in here and then sort of like there they keep falling but you just wedge the feet in and then they stay in place now the detail on the vehicle mode, which is something we, <clears throat> excuse me, something we didn't see very often in the movie. This is awesome looking. It looks so cool. This is my favorite part about this figure is the jet mode. It's first of all, the wingspan is ridiculously massive. Um, and the, just the overall sculpting, the shaping, that is a big plate of die cast metal on the, on his back. So it is, it, it has that premium feel plus that's a really sturdy joint because it holds basically everything together so I'm glad that they made that out of die cast that was a smart choice but just the detail on this thing blows me away it's so good but then again you're paying that price for this thing but it still looks really really awesome I really like the vehicle mode like I said it's quite large for comparison here siege Megatron and yeah dwarfs that figure and that figure is not exactly the smallest thing in the world, but it's not the biggest thing in the world, but it still dwarfs it. It's huge. I'm not transforming Optimus Prime because he's broken. But there he is next to Prime in robot mode if you want to recreate the scene where Optimus grabs his wings. But yeah, he's broken. Takara, please stop using clear plastic as joints because that just, that is out of focus. If you notice, that snapped clean off and I don't have any confidence in this thing anymore transforming. So it's going to stay in robot mode forever which is really unfortunate because the transformation on that thing is actually kind of fun. I enjoy it. And Exhaust, who I'm also never going to transform ever again. Because Takara, stop using clear plastic as joints. This figure also snapped. You can see it, yeah, there it is right there. The, the hinge is broken because it's clear plastic. Damn it. <laughs> After that little rant, I really like this thing. If you can get it for a decent price, I know it's $159 at Big Bad Toy Store right now, and it's available at some Toys R Us's here in Canada, but not all of them. Um, the one where I bought mine, they only had two left. But if you can find this guy for a pretty good deal, I'd say pick it up. I think it's definitely worth it-ish. But that's been my look at Movie Masterpiece Megatron. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.